The Cathedral of Mallorca is the Cathedral of Santa Maria de Palma, and it is commonly known as La Seu. It rises proudly above Palma's old city walls, and is flanked on the left by the Royal Palace, and on the right by the Bishop's Palace. The scene is set off by an ornamental lagoon, with the whole presenting an imposing sight both by day and by night. As the sun gets lower in the evening, the cathedral's sandstone takes on a warmer tone. There is a greater transformation once the sun has set over the distant mountains. The royal palace is then lit by white floodlights, while the cathedral is bathed in a golden light. Mallorca Cathedral dates back to the end of the 13th century, and it took some 350 years to complete with the build involving multiple architects over the years, each deploying a different architectural style. As we will see later, there have been ongoing internal changes, first by Antonio Gaudi earlier in the 20th century, and then by Michel Barcelo at the beginning of this century. The Parc de la Mar Lagoon was created in the 1960s when land was reclaimed from the sea to build a dual carriageway along the new seafront. The Plaza del Mirador Terrace in front of the cathedral provides views of the lake and on over to the Mediterranean Sea. It is also possible to stroll along the top of the old city walls. The portal of the west façade is in the 16th century Renaissance style, in contrast to the Gothic style of the rest of the building. My visit to the cathedral started not with the interior but with the roof terraces. They run round all sides of the cathedral, allowing views over both the city and the sea, whilst also giving close-up views of the ornate stonework of the flying buttresses. The buttresses help to spread the load of the roof onto the side walls, allowing the internal columns separating the three naves to be slender. It takes over 200 steps to reach the top, going up a spiral stairway so narrow passing would be difficult. To avoid that, there are stewards at the top and bottom connected by phone to ensure that there is only one-way traffic on the stair at a time. In the background, the vast nautical club marina has nearly a thousand yacht berths. In the foreground, the Spanish flag flies on the royal palace. It was time to head back down. The cathedral has an apse for each of its three naves. The centre one houses the royal chapel. This received a major makeover by Antonio Gaudi in the ten years from 1904. He moved the choir stalls to the side and reinstated some of the windows which had been filled in after an 1851 earthquake. He created a canopy of light feature over the altar representing a crown of thorns and he added the candelabra style electric lighting to the cathedral's columns. Two items that Gaudi moved out of the chapel were this triumphal arch and the gilt choir screen. In the right hand apse is the chapel of the Holy Sacrament, where starting in 2001, 
the Mallorcan artist Miquel Barcelo created a giant ceramic tableau depicting the miracle of the loaves and the fishes, and new windows to give an undersea feel to the lighting. In the left-hand apse is the chapel of Corpus Christi, in much more traditional 17th century style. It is considered the most important Baroque item on the island. One section depicts Jesus' Last Supper. The Chapel of Piety bears the burden of the Great Orden above its ceiling. The cathedral boasted 61 windows, including spectacular circular rose ones, the largest being some 12 metres or so in diameter, created with over a thousand pieces of glass. It has been named the Gothic Eye. This monumental doorway to the Baroque chapter house depicts faith, hope and charity. The chapter house and the adjacent sacristy have displays of important Christian relics. The cathedral has 21 chapels in total, with the private ones up each side being protected with wrought iron railings. They are dedicated to various saints, and each deserves close study and a detailed description which is beyond the scope of this short introductory video.